All right. Hey there, guys. Mr. Eisman here with our uh, Wednesday chapel video. I decided to do an extra video this week. Uh, I figured I missed last week being out, and I just really want to do a video for this Wednesday. Uh, so real quick, just to review where we've been, we're in this series, Connecting the Dots. And what this whole idea of connecting the dots is, like we've been learning about, is that all of us have these dots in our lives, these little points of information about the world and that they form our faith. They form the way we view the world. Now, these are some dots that we've talked about a whole bunch. We've got things like our ideas, our religious knowledge, things we learn in school, our academic knowledge, opinions of others, experience. And the idea is that as we begin to learn more about these things, there are these dots in our lives, these points of information that shape our view of God but we can't really see who God is or how to live our faith until we start connecting those dots. Just like when, you know, you've got one of those pictures that connect the dot activities, it looks like nothing until you start connecting them. And then the, the picture becomes clear. And we've been talking about things in this series that can help us to connect those dots. And what we're going to look at this week to connect the dots is how tough times can help us to grow our faith. That when we go through times of difficulty, God can actually use that to connect our dots so that we can understand more of who he is and more of who he's called us to be and how we should live our lives of faith. Okay. What I want to look at today, the orange curriculum included a reference to an account from the Bible from John chapter 11. Um, and it's the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. It's a really moving story. And from it, there's five things that we can actually learn about walking through hard times in a good way. Because the truth is, every one of us has or will experience tough times. Okay? And so it's something that we need to be ready for. And when we experience tough times, it can help us to connect the dots or it can actually really hurt our faith. It's a really crucial moment when we experience difficult times. And this story from the Bible, what really happened can help us to learn how to navigate tough times. Now, I've got five things that we're going to see from this about how we can uh, learn from it and how it can help us in tough times. I'm not going to talk through those points a whole bunch for this video. You guys can talk more about that if you have time in your homeroom uh, with your teachers. And we'll develop that more in the video that I'm going to have tomorrow for a regular video day. So let me opportunity to think about these points more and what they mean. So if I just kind of blow by something, don't worry, we'll talk about it more tomorrow. Today, I wanted my focus to be on the scripture, on the actual text from John 11, because it's such a moving and amazing story. So I'm going to be reading quite a bit from the Bible. Now stay with me and pay close attention, because there's a lot going on here, and it's an exciting and sad and um, overall happy and really unbelievable story that happens here. So we're going to start in verse 1, which says, Now a certain man was ill, so he was sick. There's a sick guy. And his name was Lazarus of Bethany. So the guy who's sick, his name is Lazarus, Lazarus, from the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after, her, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. That was a lot from the Bible. What is happening here? At this point, most of you are probably zoned out. All right, zone back in. This is what's happening. So Jesus is um, actually toward the end of his ministry. He is off a long way, a uh, few days travel uh, from some good friends of his. Jesus was a real person and Jesus had really close friends. And Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were brothers and sisters and they were really dear friends to Jesus. And so what happens here is Jesus is hanging out with his disciples, doing his thing, and then... Um, he finds out that Lazarus is sick. So Mary and Martha, their brother Lazarus, is sick. And so they send for people that are like, well, good thing, even though Lazarus is sick, that's not good. Good news is one of our best friends can heal him. So like Lazarus, don't worry. This is going to be fine, right? We're going to send for Jesus. Jesus is going to come get you squared away, Lazarus. Don't worry. 
And so they send the friend, Mary and Martha, send some friends to go find Jesus. And like, Jesus, you know, your friend Lazarus, he's sick, man. You better get back there and, and heal him. And Jesus says something really strange. He waits. He actually waits two days where he is. And he says that this sickness wouldn't lead to death, which ultimately it won't because he'll raise Lazarus from the dead. But it shows that Jesus had a purpose in mind. He was going to use the suffering of Lazarus to accomplish a really awesome thing. And so the first point that we're going to see is that God does not cause tough times, but God will use tough times. God will not cause tough times, but he will use tough times. Jesus didn't make Lazarus sick, but there was an opportunity within Lazarus' sickness for Jesus to do something amazing and great that would really bless the people there, even more than going and healing him initially, right? So Jesus had to wait for Lazarus to die to do an even greater miracle, which would have an even greater blessing for that community. Jesus was going to take a bad situation and use it to accomplish a good thing. All right, so we move along a little bit further. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. So Jesus arrives um, to Bethany, the town where they lived, and he finds out Lazarus has been dead four days. And Mary and Martha have been grieving with their friends, which is why in verse 18 it says, Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. So there's this whole big group of people, friends and family have come out to Mary and Martha, and they've been just grieving with them, weeping with them. Lazarus has been gone for four days. Think about that. More than half a week, he's been gone. He's been buried. He's in a tomb. They're weeping. And then Jesus rolls into town. And this is where the story gets pretty emotional. So Martha hears that Jesus is here. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. While Mary stayed at the home, and Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. So what's, what's Martha saying? Martha is very politely kind of coming at Jesus. She's like, Jesus, what's up, man? Like, we gave you enough time. We sent for help and you didn't come. You could have done something about this, Jesus. What is going on? And so she's upset because she knows that Jesus could have some, done something and he didn't. But at the same time, she also knows who Jesus is. She says, but even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. So whether or not the idea of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead was on her radar, she's upset at the situation. She isn't sure how the situation can be fixed, but she knows on the other hand that if anyone can do it, it's Jesus. And then Jesus says something that's really kind of bizarre, as he often does to her in response. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will they live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God the one coming into the world. What in the world did Jesus just say? Jesus said that he's the source of all life. And that when people believe in him, they have eternal life. Even though their physical body may have given out, their spirit will live forever, right? And so Martha's like, all right, yeah, I, sure. I believe this about you, right? And so Martha is in this moment that maybe you'll find yourself in. This is our second point in, um, in our text for today. She has this disconnect of feelings. And I'll share more about this in our video for Thursday, but she's having this disconnect of feelings that I've had before too. Where on the one hand, you're looking at your circumstances and it looks like there's no way that this could possibly be redeemed by God, used by God. Nothing good's gonna come out of this. But on the other hand, she has faith in Jesus. And she's like, I, I believe that you're the Messiah. I believe you can give the gift of eternal life. Nothing is impossible for you. Like, I believe this about you. So she has these two apparently contradictory beliefs that she just feels in her bones. Like, this situation, my brother, is terrible. How could it possibly get better? What are you going to do about this, Jesus? But I know Jesus can do something about it. 
And sometimes when we're in tough times, I have had, and we all can have, this sort of conflict of emotions, faith and doubt, grief and hope working together. And that's okay. It's okay to feel that way. It's normal to have that combination of, of grief and hope, of faith and doubt. So it's okay. Lean into those feelings when you're going through tough times. And so then Martha goes back and gets her sister, Mary. She told her privately, the teacher, meaning Jesus, is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. So he only got to the outskirts of this village of Bethany. And the Jews who were with Mary in her house, consoling her, saw Mary go quickly and go out. And they followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. So there's this whole group of people that's weeping with Mary, just consoling her. They think that Mary is going to the tomb. So they're like, okay, we'll go sit with you at the tomb and, and try to comfort you there, not knowing Mary is going to see Jesus. When Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him and she knelt at his feet. And she said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. So once again, you just see the heartbreak. You can imagine out of respect for Jesus, she's not saying more, but you can imagine there's so much more she'd like to say, like, Jesus, why? Where were you? You could have fixed this. My brother is dead. What, like, what are we going to do now? And she's in a more deep place of grief than Martha was. She's not saying that she has faith. She's just weeping, which is totally understandable for what she's going through. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? So this is the third point that we can take away from this lesson. In the face of, as Jesus is facing grief from people he loves, what is his response? Is he just a robot? Right, a lot of times I think when I read the story, if it was me, I would have been like, wipe those tears, people. I'm here. I'm here to save the day. Don't worry about it. Which Jesus could have done. He knew he was about to laze, raise Lazarus from the dead. But that would have been emotionally insensitive. Jesus is feeling their pain and their grief. He loves them. And the fact that their hearts are broken breaks his heart. And the same is true for us. When we go through difficult times, and we're faced with tough times. Jesus is with us in those moments. He weeps with us. He comforts us. He comes to us. We are never alone. Jesus knows what we're going through. And he is with us in those times of trials. So that's our third point, that Jesus weeps with us. Moving along into the story, then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. So disturbed meaning that he's upset, like he's weeping, not like you know, how we might think of disturbed today, but he's just, he's emotionally upset. He came to the tomb. It was a cave and the stone was laying against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead for four days. So Jesus goes to the tomb and does what none of them were expecting him to say. He says, roll that stone away. Because back then, uh, two people were buried in the ground the way we might think of but instead, the tomb was like a cave cut out of the side of a rock, and there was a stone rolled in front of it to seal it. And so Jesus goes to the tomb, and he says, move that stone. And everyone there is like, uh, <laughs> uh are you sure? Because by now, there's, he's going to smell. He's been dead for four days, Jesus. We open this, it's going to stink. And then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So Jesus is saying, I've got this. Trust me, roll the stone away. So they took away the stone. He looked upward and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. I knew that you always heard, hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. 
The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. So this is crazy. What does Jesus do? He prays and then commands Lazarus to get up and come out of the tomb. And Lazarus is raised from the dead. So this is our fourth point for today. That when we are in tough times, it doesn't always happen the way we would expect. I wish that when, we were, when I go through tough times or when any of us go through tough times, God would just fix it in this kind of a straightforward way. But God can fix what's broken. That's our fourth point. God can fix what's broken. It doesn't always get cleaned up this nicely. It's not like there's a problem, boop, totally fixed the way we'd like it to be fixed. But through his power, God can totally fix what's broken when we go through tough times. And then, did you notice at the end there, what's the result of this miracle? Jesus didn't just put things back the way they were. He didn't just fix what was broken, but he made it better. Remember, he was going to use the suffering for a good purpose. It says that many came, came to believe in him. Now, why is that important? Well, what did Jesus say earlier? That if people believe in him, even though they die, yet shall they live. And what does that mean? He's saying that if you believe in me, you'll have eternal life. And so a whole bunch of people, whole groups of people came to believe that Jesus was the Messiah and received the gift of eternal life. So not only did Jesus fix the situation, this is our fifth lesson, Jesus can use the tough times for a good purpose. Way more and way better than we could possibly ever think. I've seen this be true in my life. Again, we'll share more about this in the video for tomorrow. And I know that as you walk with the Lord through tough times, you'll find this to be true in your life too. So let's review these five points from John 11, the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead and how it can help us through tough times. First, God does not cause tough times, but God will use tough times. Second, it's okay to feel a disconnect in your heart between faith and doubt, between grief and hope. On the one hand, acknowledging the reality of the situation you're in. On the other hand, having hope that Jesus is there and can fix it. Number three, Jesus weeps with us. He empathizes with us. He knows where we're at and he meets us in our brokenness. Point number four, Jesus can fix what is broken. No situation is too far gone for God to fix it. And even more than that, number five, Jesus can use the tough times to accomplish a good and glorious purpose way more than perhaps we could have ever thought about. And he did this through Lazarus by using a tragedy of a man's death and using that situation not only to fix it, but also so that many people would come to receive the gift of salvation and eternal life. So there's our video for today from John 11. I hope that you enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy that story. And at this point, you know, teachers, use this as you will. You can talk more about some of those five points. You can talk more about the story. It's really powerful. I love John 11. Um, and again, we'll have another video for you tomorrow for Thursday. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.